This remarkable mosque, a masterpiece by Chinese architect Hong Pik, stands tall on Kazakhstani soil. Around it, a legend hovers, intertwined with the tragic fate of the architect himself. According to one version of this story, upon returning to his homeland, Hong Pik was accused of disclosing secrets of Chinese architectural art and building a sanctuary in a foreign land. As a result of these accusations, he had his hand severed. Another version of the legend claims that the architect was brought to Shanghai, where he was hanged. Next time you enter Kent in the Jetusu region, be sure to visit this building on the Yuldash Street. Once you enter those Central Asian architectural style gates, you will enter a whole different new world. Wow, this place is indescribable. It's better to see this place once than hear about it a thousand times. It's a mosque in Chinese architectural style, built entirely without any nails. This mosque is mentioned in the Turkestan region volume of the Russia Geographical Reference Book, published in the 20th century. Among the sites of Jarkent, it is worth noting a fairly decent city garden and, in particular, the mosque built by the wealthy local Vali Akun in the Chinese Central Asian taste near the bazaar. Regarding the history and motives behind the construction of this architectural monument typical of the 19th century, scholars make the following assertions. Jarkent Mosque, a unique example of architectural art, was influenced by international and political events in the mid-19th century. At a time when the Russian army had already conquered the city of Kulja in Chinese territory, the Russian Empire and Chinese authorities reached an agreement resulting in Jarkent becoming a center tied to the resettlement of the Russian army. The Jarkent district was established in 1982. Due to the circumstances of that period, there was a need to govern this new population on religious basis. Thus, the decision was made to build religious structures. A church was built in Jarkent for the Russian population, and the question of building the Grand Mosque for Muslims was also raised. This construction was funded by the local population. In 1887, at a meeting of the Muslim community, a decision was made to raise funds for the construction of the mosque. The responsibility for organizing and fundraising and overseeing construction was entrusted to the merchant Vali Akun Yuldashev, who contributed a significant portion of the funds. Funds for the mosque's construction were also collected by residents of several districts, including Narankol, Kegin, Shonje, Khogale, Sara Uzik which were under the jurisdiction of the Jarkent district. Residents of Kyrgyz districts also contributed to raising the funds.
Vali Bai successfully organized this process, revealed his entrepreneurial skills. He invited an architect from China known as Hong Pik, but the locals who worked with him for 10 years called him Mukan. Additionally, Vali Bai enlisted 75 masters from Bukhara, who were joined by local craftsmen. There is a legend that architect Hong Pik had no preliminary sketch or project for the Jarkent Mosque. Instead, he initially focused on preparing the necessary materials for construction. The pine logs needed for construction were brought from the Aksu Ketpin Mountains, located 200 kilometers from the site, using oxen and camels over five years. Then, within a single summer, holes were drilled into the wood, which was then used to complete the construction of the entire building. The Tianshan spruce is a high-quality and durable building material. It was widely used in construction. A number of multi-story buildings in Almaty and the famous Ascension Cathedral were built using this wood. If carefully dried, this wood, when used in construction, can last for centuries. This sounds like a legend. It is said that Hong Pik buried these poles in the sand and lit fire over them to allow the wood to dry without cracking. The builders were in no rush, carefully planning the construction on the site that was allocated specifically for the mosque. After erecting a sturdy stylobate, they proceeded with the construction of the main facility on top of it. The summer of 1892 saw the completion of the Friday Mosque's construction. The main hall of the Friday Mosque is 54.5 meters long. 29 meters wide and 22 meters high. The total of 122 meticulously crafted wooden columns ensure the building's stability. The main hall's walls are made of bricks, while the building's other facilities are made of wooden logs. The exterior of the hall features 52 wooden columns. The building has a total of 24 windows and 10 doors. During Friday prayers or Eid, all three gates and all doors were open. Ceramic bricks used for wall cladding were manufactured at a small glass and porcelain plant in Kapshagai. Wooden pillars covered with dogbane fabric were coated with gypsum, red clay and lacquer to protect them from weather and insects. All wooden pillars are installed on stone bases, preventing their decay. Giant columns were lifted with the help of several bulls. The capacity of the Friday Hall is significant, accommodating 1,500 to 1,600 people praying simultaneously. The mihrab is executed in 3D format, adding grandeur to the mosque with outstanding acoustics. Wow, how captivating! At first, it would seem it's just an ordinary wall with stars on it, but in reality, it's a, ah, a ceiling that echoes your voice so everybody in the room can hear it. Mishtin dal ortasında. Right in the center of the mosque is the pulpit where the Imam delivers the sermon. The platform has the original paint preserved on it. The oil lamps hanging on both sides are adorned with unique non-repeating patterns. 
Along the mosque's walls at the bottom are openings designed for natural air circulation along the wooden logs. The mosque astonishes with vibrant red and green ornaments. Over 1,500 diverse images and inscriptions in ancient Arabic Persian language adorn this place. Considering the representatives of different nationalities participated in the building's construction, these ornaments reflect the worldviews of various ethnic groups. <laughs> If you focus on the ornaments, you'll notice the intersection of Buddhist, Muslim and Kazakh Uyghur cultures in exquisite detail. Images of birds and animals are carefully carved and stamped on wood, then treated with colored paint. Our research on these colors conducted in previous years suggests that local masters prefer using plant-based dyes over chemicals, leaving the coloring process mysterious to this day. What stands out in this facility are the main gates, a small mosque where five daily prayers are held, a madrasa, a large Friday mosque and a fence made of burnt blue bricks 2.3 meters high. There are also additional small gates on the south and north sides. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. The entrance portal of the mosque is an example of Central Asian and Kazakh architecture. The height of the structure is 19 meters. The central large arch has a pointed shape and in both corners there is a column of flower-shaped structure resembling a tower with a decorative, luxurious dome. The portal is adorned with picturesque Arabic inscriptions and ornaments. The massive structure's unique feature is its sloped roof. The two-story building executed in the ancient Chinese architectural style is a complex structure. Engravings of plants, animals and fish are etched on the roof's edges, highlighted with various vibrant colors. Overall, the mosque's roof is designed with an exquisite floating roof in mind. At least that's the meaning of the Chinese words do and gong. The idea is to make a roof resembling a bird's wing spreading out. This concept gives the mosque a special character, combining elements of the Chinese and Kazakh architectural traditions. At the time of the construction, the roof was skillfully made of ceramics and painted in a refined brown shade. Currently, the second replacement is underway. The last similar procedure was carried out in 2002 with the help of local entrepreneurs. This mosque is full of mysteries. One of such mysteries is the tree behind me. The tree was planted here 130 years ago when the construction of the mosque was just beginning to start. The museum staff here say that when the branches fall off, the tree heals itself so it does not rot. How captivating to see.
The Jargand Mosque is an extraordinary structure that has endured numerous historical trials, including a magnitude 8 earthquake in 1910. At that time, the main portal of the mosque was seriously damaged, the towers collapsed, domes were destroyed and the walls were damaged. This was followed by the era of revolution, where with the establishment of Soviet power in 1918, local prosperous residents had left the country. The poor could not afford to care for the ancient structure. The mosque began to age and wear out due to a lack of proper maintenance. People came here for various reasons. It is worth noting that the Jarkent Mosque did not always exclusively serve religious needs. During the Soviet government, when religion was persecuted, this place temporarily served as barracks for the Red Army. It also housed the grain warehouse for local farms, which was later transformed into a cultural center. In 1948-1949, the Kazakh branch of the Academy of Architecture and Construction of the USSR conducted work to identify and study the historical and cultural monuments of the Republic. During this campaign, the Jarkent Mosque was recognized as an architectural monument and handed over to the state. The 1962 study revealed damages to the stylobate, a potential threat to the gallery of the Friday Mosque, defects in the domes and the destruction of the central part of one of the main walls. The roof of the madrasa collapsed, the walls of the small mosque's building cracked, and all doors and windows were broken and destroyed. Kazakhstan Upon the arrival of the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kazakhstan, Kunaev, in Jarkent, local residents proposed to restore the mosque for the benefit of society. This proposal was successfully implemented and the Jarkent Mosque underwent extensive repairs after which it was handed over to the public as a museum. It was the years 1969-1978 that's when extensive restoration work began. Elaborate lattice fences replaced the upper parts of the northern and southern sides of the fence, and the stylobite was completely restored. On March 24, 1978, a historic decree was signed by the Council of Ministers of the Kazakh SSR, number 107, officially declaring the opening of the Architectural and Artistic Museum. Currently, the former lecture halls on both sides of the portal have been transformed into exhibition halls of the museum. Here, models of mausoleums from different parts of Kazakhstan, pottery found during excavations in Turgen, Usharal, and various items depicting the way of life of Sharkent's population are showcased. In the summer and autumn month, the number of tourists increases as they gather to admire the Sharkent Mosque. Today, the courtyard of the Jarkent Mosque serves as a filming set for many Kazakh films. Scenes from feature films such as The End of the Ataman, Trans-Siberian Express and the Kazakh Khanate were shot here. Therefore, this architectural masterpiece in Jarkent not only contributes to tourism development but also makes a significant cultural impact. Over the centuries, this building, initially designed as a mosque, served various purposes. Currently, it's under the state protection and serves as a symbol of the Jitisu region. Warm welcome to all those who are eager to visit this place. As for us, we are off to our next destination.
they say that the only three mosques in the world are built in this unique style. One is in Kulja, the second one is in Shanghai, and the third one is this mosque in Jharkhand. According to one legend, the Chinese architect erected this mosque for free. Another version claims that the architect declared that he would not complete the mosque's construction until he received his payment. The pinnacle of all legends is a version saying that this mosque is the only project designed by Hongpik that is still standing to this day. What is fiction and what is true? It remains a mystery.